On today's Olympic Hockey Daily presented by Locked On NHL, we've got a recap of the weekend's games, a preview of the big USA versus Canada preliminary round matchup, and a deep dive into women's tournament goaltending. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to this bonus edition of Locked On NHL, focusing on the Olympic Women's Hockey Tournament. I'm Rachel Donner from Locked On Flyers. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here with Ann Kimmel of Locked On Predators. Ann, where can people find you? I'm on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. Man, we had a hell of a weekend of <laughs> women's hockey in this tournament, right? We did. This was hockey palooza and so many great games to watch uh, and keep up with and players really having great performances. So, yeah, it was a hockey weekend around here for sure. It really was. We've got a lot to get to and a lot of amazing content on today's show, including a deep dive into the goaltending with Jay Foster from Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets. So we're going to dive right in. But first, thanks for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. All right. So the biggest, I think, news outside of the actual gameplay that we have to talk about is the over an hour delay of the Canada versus Russia matchup due to a delay in COVID testing results where it seems like ROC did not submit their testing results to the Olympics. So Canada said, we're not coming out. Yep. And cannot blame Canada. Like I have to say it was confusing. And then once we kind of figured out what the issue was, you wondered how long is it going to take for this to be remedied? Is this game going to get played? But you know what? Kudos to Canada for, you know, making sure that their players were safe. were not at high risk. You know, they're looking at playing in a gold medal game, you know, down the road, a few days down the road, they can't afford to have anybody exposed, nor can any of the teams you know, for that matter. But yeah, this was high drama for a little while last night. It was. And there was a lot of confusion. The mm -hmm. play by play announcer didn't really know what was going on. The oh, Russian bless. skaters did not know what was going on for quite a bit before they were sent back to the locker room. And then, you know, everybody came out a little over an hour after the game was supposed to have started. And both teams played the game in their masks. And I think it was a little dicey, partially because at least I noticed in the broadcast where the Russian team had a pile of masks sitting on a bench on their way to and from the locker room area. Mm -hmm. So it seemed like they were just picking up a random mask oh. and putting it on. <laughs> so they could have been exchanging masks and, and that just doesn't seem appropriate. And then there was also some missing masks in the third period. Yeah, there were, it was a little bit um, confusing and a little bit discouraging to kind of see that because you think, you know, it's so important to get these games played, especially this preliminary round, you want to get them played so you can keep everything on schedule, but you also have to keep the player's safety as the primary concern. And it kind of felt like maybe one group was a little more lax and not as concerned about it as the other group. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to the goalies because we know that goalies like their fluids in between pauses in play and you really had to work as a goaltender with a mask on to All take right. your helmet off, take your mask off to get your drink. So shout out to the goaltenders for making that still work. But yeah, it was a lot of drama, a, a quite a bit of confusion. And, but again, I want to say kudos to Canada for saying, you know, we're going to wait till we have all the information. Yeah, we don't know exactly if we have all that information yet. The details are still a little sketchy, but we'll be following this, you know, as we reach the medal rounds as well. 
Uh, speaking of getting to the medal rounds, we have some standings that are actually meaningful at this point because a lot of hockey has been played. And Group A, I think, is mostly where you would think it would be with Canada mm-hmm. up top, USA in the second spot. I think maybe the surprise in Group A to some degree is that Finland has not won a game as of yet. And that's been really disappointing because they have been playing well to some degree. They have. They've had a couple of contests where you really felt like maybe they could have pulled it out with just one or two changes in play. Uh, I think it's a very interesting storyline, and we've talked about it before with the goaltending situation with Finland, where maybe they've left people off the roster and how that is, you know, you can always play the second guess that decision. And when you look at these standings, that sort of has to be one of the things that pops in your mind as you look at Finland at the bottom of the Group A standings. Um, Group B looking you know, little interesting here. We have Japan in the lead with uh, the Czech Republic and China following them second and third. We have Sweden in fourth and then Denmark is uh, the fifth place in the group B too. How does that side kind of pan out for you, Rachel? What's surprising to you? I think this is such a tight competition and is probably the more exciting (laughs) division I agree to to be watching right now because no team is undefeated Mm -hmm. you know no team is winless Um, we've had a couple of really remarkable upsets and really exciting games that we're going to talk about and you know I think that you might have expected Czechia and Japan to be in those top slots but you know Denmark squeezing out a win uh, Sweden looking just like they've been devastated, but then they pulled out a win as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just been exciting competition and I'm looking forward to the rest of the games in group B. For sure. Yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how, where that whole group finally falls group A it's a little easier. I think to kind of guess right group B it's going to keep Mm -hmm. us guessing. So I just pulling out a few stats from the tournament thus far that I thought were interesting. Uh, ROC and Canada have the most penalties taken by far, uh, 17 and 16 respectively. USA and Japan with the least penalties taken, uh, six each. And, you know, I I think it, it shows a lot because the USA penalty kill seems like it's the worst in the tournament, <laughs> you know, with the numbers, but right. they've only committed six penalties, but allowed two power play goals. So right. that's kind of where those numbers are coming from. So I think, you know, Team USA would want to be better on the penalty kill overall, but they're doing a great job in staying out of the box. Yeah. And, and credit to that, you know, we always joke at Locked On Predators, there are no snacks in the Sid bin and it's like <laughs> Russia and Canada, you know, are, are playing with almost reckless abandon when it comes to things like penalties. And I think this is definitely something to keep your eye on in these next couple of games, especially with USA, Canada, you know, Canada is going to need to, and want to tighten that up a bit in this game that's coming up tonight. So I think things like power play, uh, Uh, penalty kill could swing some games if teams aren't a little bit more careful and a little bit more disciplined. Yeah, there's some little interesting tidbits in there as well with like Mm -hmm. Sweden, who is one and two, they haven't allowed a power play goal on 10 chances. Uh, Canada is in the second slot, allowing um, 17 power plays for their opponent in group B Denmark and China are doing well on the PK with only one power play goal allowed each. So, and then on shots on goal team USA has the most so far in group a and Japan in group B and Japan does have a lot of firepower, but I might've expected Czechia to be on top of that group. Yeah, no, I would totally agree with that. And to be honest, just the eye test for me, I was surprised it was USA and not Canada in Group A, just based on the eye test. But, you know, we'll see. And again, that's one of those statistics that's going to be interesting to keep an eye on in tonight's game. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of tonight's game, we're going to preview that a little bit coming up. But just looking at kind of patterns and trends again, obviously, Team Canada, it's the Sarah show, which I am having a ton 
of fun with uh, Sarah yes. Faye and Sarah Nurse. Uh, Sarah Nurse has gotten a hat trick in the tournament. Uh, Sarah Fillier had two in that game versus Finland. And then the first two goals of their game against Team Russia were, of course, Fillier and yep. Nurse. You know? <laughs> I know. I'm loving this. Uh, Sarah Nurse has had a lot of success in the international, you know, in international competition and in Olympics before. But it's been really fun to see Sarah Fillier just light it up she has no you know no fear of the big stage no hesitation about playing in the olympics and she is exciting to watch so i'm loving the sarah show exactly on the team usa side i think for me it's looking at the depth scoring that they've been able to pull their fourth line has been extremely productive and I, I'm, it's really exciting to see because it seems like no matter what matchup is out there, they're able to get a significant amount of offensive chances. Well, and it's a credit to this team because you really do have uh, a swapping up of lines. They've had to kind of reconfigure some things with the Brianna Decker injury. And so they've kind of swapped up lines, but the chemistry is there. This fourth line hasn't missed a beat. They are creating chances and really um, – you know, you're seeing a line that is offensively and defensively really strong. So I would agree with you. That's one of my biggest takeaways too with USA. Um, They've really played a a strong, deep game. Before we jump over to Group B, I just do want to note that uh, Switzerland beat Finland three to two, which got them their first win and kind of kept their momentum going a little bit. It's been a little brutal for them. And so I was really yes. glad, really glad to see that happen for them. But Group B, I think, had two of the best games we've seen in this entire tournament, the first of which was Japan versus China. Uh, China winning that game 2-1 to one in a shootout. And, man, that was probably the most exciting game I've watched <laughs> all tournament. And China was just battering Japan in the third period and, you know, Nana Fujimoto was on it. Again, we're going to talk a little bit about her more in our goalie segment. But mm-hmm. between the third period and the overtime, uh, it was like seat of your pants kind of action. <laughs> yes. China got the only shootout goal and thus won the game uh, from Hannah Miller. And uh, it was just like you wanted both teams to win, honestly. Yes. yes. Oh, totally understand. And, you know, another game that I thought was really great in Group B play was Sweden versus China. You know, Sweden has really been struggling in this tournament, but they were able to win two to one. And it was a really fascinating and interesting game to watch because in the beginning, it really felt like China had all of the momentum and, and China mm-hmm. has played some really strong games. Uh, they went up one nothing, and then Sweden was awarded a penalty shot, made that shot, and about a minute and a half later scored another goal. And that, just those two quick scores carried the momentum for Sweden the rest of the game, and China just couldn't seem to find a way to get back into it. So I thought that was a really great game. Uh, a little bit of an unexpected outcome for me, but a great game to watch. Exactly. And you're right about the momentum shift. It was mm-hmm. just, that game just turned on a dime in those yes. 90 seconds and Sweden never looked back. I thought at that point, uh, a couple of other games that were really good on the group B side, uh, Denmark versus Czechia, Denmark upset Czechia three to two. And uh, when Czechia played Sweden earlier, they won three to one. And I thought uh, both of those games were pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are going to get to that Team USA versus Team Canada showdown preview. We're going to get to the goaltending conversation right after this. But first, if you're trying to get fit or eat healthier, make sure you include Bilt Bar in your plan. Bilt Bar is a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar. Sometimes I think they even taste better. And Bilt Bar makes it so much easier to stick to your plan. Sometimes other protein bars can be chalky or waxy or taste like chemicals. You want to eat healthy, but it can get so boring. 
Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. So when you're craving a snack or a treat, you reach for something that's healthy and tastes incredible. Your typical Built Bar has 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. They've got so many amazing flavors to choose from. I love the salted caramel and the cookies and cream. Built is always coming out with new limited time flavors. So check out Built.com to see what's new. While you're there, use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Once again, thanks for making Locked on NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. All right, so we've got the big matchup coming up late night Eastern time, uh, and you are blessed to be in Central time, so starts at 10 o'clock. A little bit Much better more for you. normal, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought we would kind of go over the recent history of the USA-Canada rivalry. And then we're going to bring in Jay Foster, like I said, at the top of the show and get into the goaltending discussion for the Team USA and Team Canada uh, before we get into goaltending across the rest of the tournament. But the history between the United States and Canada in women's hockey is a long-standing rivalry. I think it goes back till the dawn of women's hockey, I'm sure. But <laughs> I think in terms of the modern history, it starts in the 1998 Olympics, where it was kind of a mini miracle on ice, where Team USA won the gold medal in that first Olympics where they had women's hockey. And then Canada proceeded to win the next four golds at the Olympics. While the world championships, things went kind of back and forth, as well as the Four Nations Cup. Uh, but starting in 2015, Team USA won gold in all of the worlds up until this past year and Four Nations Cups. And it took a grand 20 years before Team USA managed to win another gold medal at the Olympics. Of course, they did so in dramatic fashion in 2018 in Pyeongchang. And, you know, it went as the kind of tradition had been going for a while. If you listen to our tournament preview, uh, preview with Nicole Hazi, we talked a little bit about the fact that with these two teams, it seems to be a flip-flop between the preliminaries and the medal rounds where whichever team won the preliminary match would then lose the gold medal match. And that's what happened in 2018, right? Yes. Yeah, so 2018 in the preliminaries, Canada defeated the United States two to one. Even though the United States came out, they played, you know, just blazing offense, um, 45 to 23 shots on goal in that game, and yet just could not seem to get it done in Canada one in the preliminaries to one. Then you fast forward to the gold medal match, and this was just iconic hockey moment, iconic hockey match, the gold medal match, uh, 3-2 United States, won in a shootout. Um, and just one of those uh, classic, iconic USA-Canada games that we'll probably always be talking about when we talk about either one of these teams. Um, great game. In 2019, we had the World Championships in the preliminaries. Uh, USA won three to two, um, but uh, Canada then did not actually end up in the gold. USA uh, played against Finland in a gold medal match. And we've talked about that just briefly before in some yes. other earlier episodes that that was just a whole thing, a whole thing uh, that match. But USA won gold in that. And of course, then you get to 2020 and, you know, pandemic, COVID womp, hits. Womp. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. So a whole lot of nothing happening. Um, 2021 World Championships. And it was another, Rachel, it was another kind of interesting, how is this going to go? Uh, did they, you know, could they break this pattern? Did they not? And it turned out that Canada came pretty hungry after not having any competition in 2020. 
They did. And, you know, they won that preliminary match five to one. And then, uh, of course, in heartbreaking fashion for yeah. American fans, uh, Canada won the gold medal three to two in overtime. Of course, Marie Philippe Poulin getting that overtime goal as she does because yes. she's the best. Um, <laughs> cannot deny that. Uh, I think that, you know, we sort of brushed over 2014 in Sochi, which was pretty demoralizing for Team USA, uh, losing that heartbreaker after being ahead and then and losing in overtime in that game. And I think that, you know, coming into this tournament, um, since the last two gold medals have been back and forth between the two countries, there's a lot of pressure on both teams, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Where I think that there's a lot of pressure on Team USA to repeat, which, you know, obviously they have not been able to do at the Olympic stage. And then for Team Canada to sort of get that thrown back, right, after having it for so many years and losing it in 2018. Yeah, there's a lot going on between these two teams when you look at preliminaries and then medal matchups. You know, this is this is a rivalry, as as most all hockey things are USA Canada. So what is your feeling on this matchup so far, Rachel, as we kind of look to this game tonight? You know, it could go either way. I will say <laughs> yeah. That in this tournament, I have been very impressed with Team Canada on two mm -hmm. different levels. Number one, mm -hmm. they've been very aggressive. I think that they've been extra physical. Now, they've taken a lot of penalties as a result, so they're going to have mm -hmm. to watch that. But I think that they've their physicality has just been a step above everybody else's. Mm -hmm. And so I, I know that Team USA can match that, but will they? I don't know yet. And then I think on the other level, Team Canada has been so good with their rushes and their mm -hmm. passing is so clean and so crisp and they really know how to space themselves out appropriately depending on who they're matched up with so that their passes don't get picked off and they're able to go like boom, 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 shot on goal, right? Yes. Whereas I feel like Team USA just takes a little bit more time to get set up and they haven't been as successful on the rush, whereas they've been, you know, scoring prolific but I think it's been based more on after they were set up or, you know, a dirty goal up front. Yes. No, I would agree with that. And I think, um, I think it's going to be a great matchup, but I would say that I feel like some of Team USA's goals have come on um, compliments of mistakes of their opponent. And Team Canada is just not a team that's going to make some of those mistakes that USA has capitalized on. And that's where I feel like Canada just plays a little bit cleaner, tighter game where this this may be the this may be the team that gives Team USA the most trouble. And, you know, we'll have to see how they rise to that. All right. Well, a big part of this is going to be goaltending because there's yes. going to be a lot of shots on goal here. And so we are going to bring on to talk all about goaltending in this tournament and starting off specifically with this matchup tonight, our colleague from Locked On Columbus Blue Jackets, Jay Foster. Hey, hey Jay, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Good. So we want to talk all things goaltending, but first we want to get your take on the tournament so far. What are you seeing? What are you liking? What are you noticing? Man, women's hockey is just so good. Like, yes. <laughs> I, feel like we, I feel like we all know this, but I just, every time <laughs> the Olympics comes around or uh, world championships or anything like that, like it's just... Not to not to match it against the men's game, but I just I always enjoy watching the women's tournaments so much more, um, and I don't know whether that's because um, the, the, I don't know it, it's a bigger deal for the women's game, and so mm -hmm. I feel like they take it a little bit more seriously than the men who kind of treat world championships as oh this is just kind of a thing we're doing because we didn't make the playoffs in the NHL. So it's just I don't know women's hockey is is just more fun. I'm having I'm having a, an absolute riot watching this tournament i feel like every team has at least one player on it that i'm like wow like how lucky are we to get to watch yes player play like i just watched uh, earlier today the america switzerland 
game, like how lucky are we to get to watch Alina Muller? Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, especially after the heartbreak of of last time where she broke her foot, I believe, um, and, and couldn't finish the tournament. So uh, just, I just, yeah, I feel really lucky that I get to watch all of these incredible women play at the peak of their careers on the biggest stage in the world for them. Mm. So we just were talking Team USA, Team Canada matchup. Where where do you land on this? What's your take as we look ahead to this this game coming up? My take, I always say that my take is mostly chaos because obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah. if, if listeners can't tell by by my accent, I have no allegiance to uh, to either team. Uh, That's why we appreciate it. It's neutral. That's right. <laughs> neutral I, opinion. Uh, I typically land on the American side just because there are so many players on the american team that like my so my my hockey watching career kind of started around sochi and it was mm-hmm. watching players like hillary knight and amanda kessel and i was like these players are incredible and so i've always kind of fallen more on the the side of the americans just because i'm i'm more familiar with a lot of their players i like a lot of their players more but i mean team canada also has some some really incredible players like it's so hard to root against a player like marie fleet Poulain. Yes, mm, it is. She's a wonderful human being as well. <laughs> <laughs> so getting into the goaltending matchup here so far, we've seen uh, and we are recording this before Canada's third game, but uh, we saw Anne Renee Debian and she hasn't had a ton of work to do thus far, but has still managed to play well. And when she's been tested, she's made the saves. Um, is this part of her game that she's figured out how to manage that lack of action and then suddenly face a Team USA with more shots a- against? Yeah, I yeah I believe so. Um, I mean, first of all, like it feels extremely unfair that Canada has had you know almost ten years of. Shannon, Shannon Zabados, arguably mm-hmm. one of the best goalies in the world, and has gone straight from from that to Anne Renee Debian, who is probably one of, if not the best, NCAA goaltender mm-hmm. that, that there has ever been. You know, and you know she played for a very very good University of Wisconsin team during her during her college career, where you know it was also. I think she recorded something crazy, like I think two thirds of her games were shut out in, in her college career. Like she was just, she was a phenomenal college goaltender. And I think that more than anything has kind of prepared her for this kind of Team Canada style play of most of the teams that they're playing are not going to be a problem for Team Canada or for her specifically. And so I think she's kind of drawing on that college experience of most of the college right. teams she played bar, you know, maybe the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes mm-hmm. or um, the gold, the Golden Gophers in Minnesota, like those in my eye and like maybe one of the one or two of the Boston teams, depending on, on where year it is like beyond that, she hadn't really had a, any real challenges in, in NCAA. And I think it's kind of the same thing in uh, for Team Canada where, yeah, like the only teams that really, I mean, obviously America is, is going to be a tough, a tough game for her and um finland also potentially um could be could be a, a, an interesting game but yeah it's 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 so hard to play that kind of style where you face like i think what she faced tw- like 12 shots in mm-hmm. in her last game or something like that like as a i mean i, I do not play you know on the same level as as Aaron ADBN, but you know as a as a beer league goaltender like standing there and waiting and you know sometimes you you, it's 10 minutes between shots on goal sometimes you know it's so hard to to stay focused to stay warm and so I think Damian should probably get a lot more credit than she does for okay yes she only faces a shot every like three minutes of the game or if that you know um or every six minutes or whatever it is I think it's 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 a lot harder than people think to just kind of stand there for yeah. ten minutes mm-hmm. and then face a shot and then you stand there for another ten minutes and then sometimes you face two shots. Like again, going back to the um the game earlier today, the America Switzerland one, the um Nicole Hen uh not Nicole Hensley, excuse me, uh Alex Cavallini made mm-hmm. a phenomenal 
save on one of the Swiss players. I think it was it was her first or second shot of the game, and she'd just kind of been standing there mm-hmm. for most of the game. And it's it's so hard to kind of stand there and then suddenly face a shot after ten minutes of of watching again. So yeah, I think okay, she hasn't had a lot to do, but like you said, she's been good when she's needed to be. And sometimes that's those games are, are harder than the games where, mm-hmm. you know, you're facing a shot. You know, like uh, when you're facing, I, don't know, I assume the shots will probably be about 35-ish against America. Maybe that's that's a little low, maybe that's a little high, but like that's so much easier in terms of, of being able to stay ready than I don't know when I'm going to face the next shot. So I just kind of have to stay focused, but also not get distracted, not, you know, end up puck watching or watching the game a little bit. So, um, yeah, just to kind of to circle back to, to the answer then, yeah, I think it is, it's definitely something that she's had to work hard at because sometimes when you are a really good goalie, you have to work at not getting as much work as, as uh, a goalie who plays for a, a less good team, shall we say. So you mentioned Alex Cavallini. We've seen her. We've seen Nicole Hensley. We've seen Amanda Rooney in net. Who do you think is going to get the start um, and why when it comes to Canada, USA? Man, it's tough because all three of them are extremely good goalies. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally am a huge Rooney fan. I Mm -hmm. have been for a while now. She's who I would pick if I was making the decisions, um, but I thought Hensley played a uh, brilliant game against uh, the Russian Olympic Committee. I mm-hmm. thought uh, Cavallini was really good today. And, you know, she's, yeah. they were they were talking about it on the broadcast, who, um, by the way, getting um, Monique, Monique Lamoureux for, like, colour commentary has been such a, such a good thing for, for the women's game. She knows so much about team america specifically and also you know just women's hockey in general and so she's been you know talking a lot about well i've known this player for the last 20 years right yeah it's really cool to see her finally you know take this chance and so obviously she didn't get any games in uh, pyeongchang and so it was so good to see her get a game today and i thought she played really well especially again considering she has the the anna and problem of uh well, I might face a shot this period. I might not. We yes. just don't know. Um, but I think I would go Rooney. I think she's the de facto number one. Um, mm-hmm. Just by by dint of, you know, her performance over the past few years of, uh, you know, uh, uh, international play. Uh, I think she's, you know, she. I think she's a better goalie than a lot of people give her credit for. Again, because I think there's that idea of, well, she plays behind this Team America, who, you know, arguably the best team in the world. So obviously she's going to look good. But I I have really liked Rooney basically her entire career. So she's who I would pick. I wouldn't necessarily be upset if they put um, Hensley in. But in my mind, there's really only one one choice when you're playing Canada. And that's, that's Rooney. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. My gut, like I probably would put Hensley in just because a, she did have that great game. um, And it was against the Russian team, which is a little bit more physical, I think, than the other teams that they faced so far. So I think like the style of play of the game matches it a little better. And I think she is the perfect balance right now of being a little rested but not too rested whereas Rooney played in Mm. that first game so she might be a little cold so you know I go back and forth my guess is they'll put Maddie Rooney in but I think I might put Nicole Hensley in yeah it's it's tough and again you know I don't know that either of them is the wrong answer right Mm -hmm. you know they're both very very good goalies um the only other thing as well that makes me think that maybe they put Rooney in is starting Cavallini uh today Mm -hmm. as of as of recording this uh it's it's Sunday so if I think if they were going to start Hensley they probably would have put Rooney in today Mm -hmm. um interesting it's you know so starting Cavallini today makes me think that maybe they're pushing towards putting a very rested uh, Rooney against um, 
against Canada. But again, I, I until they, they led the teams out today, I fully assumed that they were going to play uh, Rooney today. So what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, same. It's a, absolutely it's a guess. same. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have so, more goaltending talk coming up here with Jay. Um, but first, we want to let you know that this episode is brought to you from our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lights than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game coming up next week. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops. Of course, they have NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so getting into the goaltending on some of the other teams in the tournament. Obviously, the situation on Team Finland has been tough. We've talked on these shows about Nora Ratu and why she's not there this time around. And given kind of the disappointing results for Finland so far, do you think it would have made a difference if Nora Ratu was there? And then how do you think they're handling it so far between their two goaltenders? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's made a difference. Like, I I've seen the the press release where they talked about how they didn't want to bring her as a backup, but like, if you have the opportunity to take Nora to to a tournament, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. You know, she's she is the best goalie in the world. She is phenomenal. I don't understand why you would leave her at home, even if you know that this this thing about how oh well we respect her too much to make her a backup. And uh, one of our other goalies, who um, the name I'm blanking on, apologies, earned the starting job because of how they played uh, in in recent play. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's it's Nuratu. You know, like it feels very much like a classic case of where we've overthought this. Um, you know, it, it's it's like how mm-hmm. um, it's like when people are like, oh, well, obviously before this this season kind of kicked off, everyone was like, well, obviously Carrie Price is going to go to the Olympics for Team Canada and through a, a series of, uh, I don't want to say misadventures because I feel like that trivializes it, but between his injury, between mm-hmm. his entering the player assistance program and then obviously COVID finally putting a halt to NHL players at the Olympics, I saw a lot of people being like, well, maybe we shouldn't take Carey Price because he's getting old. There are other really good Canadian goalies. And I'm just like, it's the same thing. Like if you have the choice to take, if you have the chance to take Carey Price to the Olympics, why wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Even at the age of what, like how old is he now? I want to say he's like 35, even at the age of 35, he's still better than basically every other goalie in the world, in my opinion. And it's the same thing with Ratu. She's the best women's goalie. She's just the best one. Like it, it, it baffles me to when I saw that they weren't taking her. Um, in terms of how Finland's been been doing so far, um, I don't think it's it's bad. I still think that they would have had a, a tough job even with Ratu, um, mm-hmm. because yeah. you know the the teams that they that they faced, especially you know they faced a very strong uh, American team, and I don't necessarily think that Ratu would have been able to give them the the win in that case because the players just aren't scoring enough goals to overcome you know even even the the good goaltending that they would get with with Ratu so it is tough to say you know how how different it would have been but I think you know okay they you know it, it in no no hindsight no kind of foreshadowing whatever like looking at the goalies that they have. I think it's they've been doing about as well as we can kind of expect. If you if you ignore if you take Ratu out of the picture entirely, she was never an option. Um, and just kind of focus on okay, these are the goalies that they've brought. I think yeah, both goalies are, are doing a, a pretty good job considering you know the the powerhouse that they have to face being in the same group as both. Um, America and Canada and you know that's that group is just kind of a bonkers group 
anyway. Uh, I understand that they'll be reseeding it after the kind of the the round robin has played out, but like having to play uh, Canada, America, uh, the Russian Olympic Committee, which usually puts out a pretty strong showing, kind of, and having Finland in the same group, like that's a that is a tough group to to overcome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Russian Olympic Committee, Maria Sorokina really did, you know, she held her own against Team USA with only one goal allowed per period in the first two until the third period. Um, and she ended up getting pulled after that fifth goal. Do you think that she's somebody who's going to keep the Russian Olympic Committee team in tight games other than, say, against Canada or the United States? Um, to get them in a good position to head to the medal round. Yeah, one hundred percent. She was mm-hmm. she was my MVP for that game against uh, America. I thought she was just again phenomenal. I feel like I've described mm-hmm. every goaltender so far as phenomenal, but like it's, <laughs> it's best against the best. It's you know, the Olympics. It is. Was... It's the Olympics. Yep. <laughs> she was she, okay. I I was not super familiar with uh, Sarkina before before the Olympics, um, and I kind of did a little bit of digging when I kind of watched those first two periods, like. Holding America to two goals in mm. 40 minutes is impressive, you know, but you can only hold them back for so long. And I think it was uh, fatigue, probably, where, you know, the, the floodgates started to open. You know, you can only hold off a team like that for so long. And I thought, her fir- like, the first 40 minutes were incredible. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. She is a, a fantastic goalie. Uh, currently, she's in... Um, She's playing for a, a league in Russia at the minute. Uh, she has, I think, she has like a nine fifty seven save percentage so far on the on the season back home. You know, so just obviously phenomenal, phenomenal numbers there. But I I liked her uh, play. I think she's a really um, she's just a really steady goaltender. You know, I think when you when you get to the big stage, I think the um, the urge is to kind of be a little bit. Not showy, but I think the the urge to kind of overcorrect and overreact is there, especially when you're playing a team like Canada or a team like America. And she didn't. Uh, I thought she was a really steady presence. She made a lot of really really good saves. Uh, you know, I watched that um, the Kendall Coyne Schofield breakaway from the first period. I think I watched that save maybe three or four times after the game. You know, she was she was yeah. Really she really good. held her position well on that. She did. Um, and so, yeah, I think when she, you know, when they, when they have her playing in games that are not against, you know, the likely gold and or silver medal winners of, of this tournament, then I could see her keeping Russia in it. Um, because I feel like the, the, the problem with Russia has always kind of been goaltending. They've had some very good forwards and some very good defenders, but they've never, to, in my mind, anyway, they've never had a true number one goalie to kind of backstop that and I think Sarakina has been she's been that you know she's she gave them a chance against the Americans for as long as she could uh, mm-hmm. and I could see her doing really really well against uh, a less high octane team shall we say mm-hmm. yeah uh, looking at group B, I think there have been two standout goaltenders on that side of play. First of which is uh, Nana Funu Fujimoto for Team Japan. And I know they lost to China in that upset uh, in a shootout, but Japan did qualify for a quarterfinal spot in that game. And she's been outstanding in this tournament. I would say the other one is from team China, uh, Kimberly Newell, who's had a couple of solid games so far. And before Monday's games had the second highest save percentage in the tournament so far. So what do you think of those two in the tournament? Yeah, I, I, I am. and always have been a huge Nana Fujimoto fan. All the way back to you know the uh, when they were still the New York Riveters, yes, um, you yes. know the, we're going five six years back now when she signed <laughs> with them, and she's just she's just a, such a, a nice person on top of everything. But she, I think she's a really really good goaltender, um, 
And yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me that, that Japan is performing well with, with her because she's uh, she's phenomenal. Uh, I thought she was really great in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Japan and China, which I feel like... She was probably... getting hammered at the end yeah. of that game, in the third period and the overtime and just looked so calm in that. Yeah, that, that feels to me, obviously it's not on the same scale as kind of America and Canada, but that feels like it felt like it was too... Uh, for the most part, anyway, that was two really balanced teams. And so I thought that was a really yes. good example of getting two very good teams that are kind of equally matched, but not on the scale of America and Canada. So that was a really fun game to watch uh, in my mind. And yeah, Newell has been kind of, I wasn't sure what to expect from, from Newell from this tournament, but so far she's kind of, she's been as advertised. Um, you know, obviously the... Uh, the win over, I believe the win over Sweden was uh, mm -hmm. a Newell in net. And that, I remember, I think I, I woke up to that result and I was like, wow, because that was not what I was expecting. I know Sweden has kind of been on a little bit of a downward, uh, a downward slide since, I would say maybe since Sochi. Um, but, you know, a, a win over Sweden still in my mind is incredibly impressive. Um, and so, yeah, I think Newell is, uh, Newell has been, fantastic for for team uh china team china's been um surprise like, i want to i don't want to say surprisingly good i've been i've been really enjoying watching uh watching the chinese team play and i know a lot of people were like well they're only here because they're the hosts and like mm, not necessarily they uh they're doing a lot better than i believe the the men's team is is going to do the the chinese men's team so yeah, they've been good to watch. And let's also just high five for the Chinese goalie pads that look uh, as good that's... in action as they mm -hmm. did in still photos. Oh my Incredible. gosh. Incredible. <laughs> They're amazing. I was saying yesterday, Nicole Hensley's uh, pads are just like seven fire emoji good, but the, <laughs> the dragon pads oh. are, yeah, those are, those are probably my favorite goalie pads I've ever seen. Like They're incredible. None. Yeah. So Jay, work. before we go, is there anybody that else that you think of that's really stood out to you or that you think is going to be a difference in stealing some games the rest of this tournament going forward? Yeah, I mean well I would be I would be remiss if I did not mention um Andrea uh, Brandley from mm, uh yes. Switzerland. She obviously came in in relief, played the sec played the last forty minutes of the game against America, yes. allowed I think yes. two goals. Um She's currently uh, an Ohio State Buckeye, so you know we we love we love all the, the Blue Buckeyes. Jackets connection. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I you know I'm not a goalie, but I have really been enjoying watching Jinsey Dunn on the power play for Team America. I love Jinsey Dunn, always have done. You know, way back when she was playing boys hockey in St. Louis. Uh, so you know to see her get this this opportunity at the main stage is is incredible. We love former Buckeyes uh, on on Locked On Blue Jackets. So and current Buckeyes. <laughs> Um, and she, I believe, has, I looked this up, she has a, a 9-24 through 12 games at Ohio State this season and a goals allowed uh, against average of, I think, 1.89. So she's allowing less than two goals a game in uh, for the Buckeyes, which is a big reason why they're, they're so good this season. Um, and I, again, she, she did what Sarakina did. She held the Americans at bay, which I think is really all you can do if you mm -hmm. are. Switzerland yes. or the Russian Olympic Committee or you know that kind of level of we're looking at maybe the kind of the four to seven seeds in uh in the Olympics uh, in the women's game rankings um and she did she I thought she played fantastically uh considering she came in in relief she came in cold after 20 minutes and again she was just a very steady presence much like Tarikina was and she kind of settled the game down a little bit I thought she gave the Swiss team a chance to really kind of play a little bit more offensively minded because I feel like the the urge when you're playing teams like America and Canada is to play ultra defensive because if you right. make a mistake they're going to make you pay for it right but if you have a goalie like Brandley in net then you can kind of okay we don't have to have all five of our players in front of the American, like the one American uh, fort checker, you know, she gives you a chance to kind of stretch the game out a little bit, uh, stretch the ice out. And so 
again, she's Owen three, uh, I believe Owen two now. It'll be because um, the the loss will go on to Mora, who I thought was good as well. But again, you can kind of, uh, you can kind of see that she just was not on the same level as the Americans. Um, I thought she played. She played really well, but you, there's again, there's only so much you can do. But yeah, Brandley is is my uh, kind of underdog goalie. I think mm-hmm. for for um, the the coming games. All right. Well, that's a lot of amazing goalie conversation right there. I know you're kind of the locked on goalie whisperer, Jay. So that is, yeah. yeah I, I, talk is... For, oh. I talked for like 45 minutes to Sarah Avampato of Locked On Kings about goalies like two days ago. So <laughs> it's great. I love it. I will always talk about goalies. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll come and talk about UC Saros sometime. I love UC Saros. So. <laughs> <laughs> Consider it a date. We are there. We love short goalies. Um, as as a five foot ten goalie myself, uh, we love short goalies. So, yep, yep. we call him Fun Size. He's our yes. Fun Size goalie. <laughs> yep, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks again, Jay, for coming on and talking Olympic women's goaltending with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always happy to uh, come and talk goalies. All right, that will do it for today's show. Lots to talk about. So it was a little extra long today, but totally worth it. We're so excited for the matchup between USA and Canada. Of course, that is what we will be talking about primarily on tomorrow's show. So tune in and thanks so much for listening. Have a great day.